Hello and welcome to the Gaggle Global Challenge and if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. Earlier with me today, of course, is co-founder of the Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So Peter, um, the Washington Post wrote a very interesting article uh, the other day, um, which uh, showed that um, the CIA has for some time been uh, running, organizing, and uh, scheduling um, the Ukrainian intelligence service. It's not exactly a, a surprise for us, but the um, the extent of this uh, control um, was very um, illustrative. I mean, it's a you know we, we kind of were a, a little bit amazed. The problem, is, you know, in in this article, is that well, if the CIA is running the Ukrainian intelligence services. What about all these things that you're saying the Ukrainian intelligence service or the Americans are saying Ukrainians did by themselves, like assassinations, uh, like blowing up Nord Stream? Um, where did you come into all of that? So I just want to show you a little bit from this um, article in the Post, um, which is um, just here. It says... Ukrainian spies with deep ties to CIA wage shadow war against Russia. And then he goes, the assassination of Daria Dugina was orchestrated by Ukraine's domestic security services, the SBU. And then he said, you know, it's all part of that. And then um, these operations have been cast as extreme measures Ukraine was forced to adopt in response to Russia's invasion last year. In reality, they represent capabilities that Ukraine spy agencies have developed over nearly a decade, a period during which the service has also forged deep new bonds with the CIA. Notice again, nearly a decade. Now, what happened nearly a decade ago? Oh, yes, uh, Maidan. So, well, George, at... just before we continue with that, the operation has been cast as an extreme measures for Ukraine. Well, why? I mean, that's a choice, okay? Yeah. I mean, right. they're not being, you know, how are they being forced? Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then the missions have involved elite teams of Ukrainian operatives drawn from directorates that were formed, trained, and equipped in close partnership with the CIA. Since 2015, the CIA has spent tens of millions of dollars to transform Ukraine's Soviet form services into potent allies against Moscow. So again, you know, when you control a, a country's intelligence services, you're pretty much, uh, you know, the satellite of the one who's doing the controlling. I mean, it's like we, we, everyone knew in the era of the Warsaw Pact that everything was run by the KGB. So if they say, well, this assassination was carried out by the Bulgarian intelligence services we knew well okay well who stands behind the bulgarian intelligence services well the kgb i mean you know that that's what it means when you control the intelligence services and also you could use the example of west germany west germany's yeah. intelligence was, was uh, run, run by the cia yeah run yeah. by the cia and they cobbled together the the uh, elements of the uh, of the nazi germany's intelligence that's and right. they just re repurposed them okay that's right that's right, that's right. Um, because they knew a lot about the Soviet Union. They, they, they had, you know, they'd been fighting there during World War II. They acquired a great deal of information about the Soviet Union. Um, the agency has provided Ukraine with advanced surveillance systems, trained recruits at, at sites in Ukraine as well as in the United States, built new headquarters for departments in Ukraine's military intelligence agency, and shared intelligence on a scale that would have been unimaginable uh, before Russia illegally annexed Crimea and fomented a separatist war in eastern Ukraine. Um, so again, already you, you have, you have, they're going to list, and then the extent of the involvement has not previously been disclosed. U.S. intelligence officials stress that the agency has had no involvement in targeted killing operations by Ukrainian <laughs> agencies. Definitely not. We, we had nothing to do with that. You know, we run this, you know, everything we fund it and run it, but it's they they do all these things. Um and and it and that its work is focused on bolstering these services' abilities to gather intelligence on a dangerous adversary. Um 
So a senior intelligence official said that any potential operational concerns have been conveyed clearly to the Ukrainian services. So we, we gather. Well, I think those last two bullet points contradict each other. But exactly, anyway. that's exactly what I think. So yeah, yeah, we you know we we have we have nothing to do with any of that. Just intelligence gathering. But, oh, but any op operational concerns, you know, we we convey to them. Don't 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 do that. Uh, or at least don't tell us about it beforehand. Uh, um, and then many of Ukraine's clandestine operations have had clear military objectives and contributed to the country's defense. The car bombing that killed Daria Dugina, however, underscored Ukraine's embrace of what officials in Kiev refer to as liquidations as a weapon of war. But there's a, there's a problem here is that, well, how does that, how is that in any way a wartime objective? Um, she's a, you know, she's a young woman who's a journalist. I mean, how, how is that in any way a legitimate target uh, of anything? Um, over the past 20 months, the SBU and its military counter counterpart, the G G GUR, have carried out dozens of assassinations against Russian officials in occupied territories, alleged Ukrainian collaborators, military officers behind the front lines, and prominent war supporters deep inside Russia. So again, well, was this this is the CIA? I mean, you you know, this, that that's that's an awful lot of stuff that they're doing, and you know, where's the CIA in uh, in all of this? Also interesting, <laughs> you flip the the script here. Have you heard about uh, the Russian assassination program? Well, exactly. Ukraine? That's right. I haven't heard yeah. anything about that. Yeah. Um, um, those uh, killed include a former Russian submarine commander jogging in a park in the southern uh, Russian city uh, of Kastanda, in a militant blogger at a cafe in St. Petersburg. So again, um, you know, you're saying he's a former Russian submarine commander, and then you have a blogger. How are these in any way um, legitimate military targets? Uh, I mean, you don't go to uh, officers' homes and then just simply shoot them and say, "Well, okay, that's what, like you know he was he was preparing dinner and we just sort of shot him." And again, that's not not quite um, the way you uh, conduct war. Um, Ukraine's affinity for lethal operations has complicated its collaboration with the CIA, raising concerns about agency complicity and creating unease among some officials in Kiev and Washington. Oh, really? Uh, people are uh, uh, at uh, uh, unease in the CIA. Come on, really? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Really? Un Come unease, on. yeah. Um, I mean, what they probably said, you know, what, don't make such a big splash, okay? I mean, well, that, but that's, well, exactly. The problem they have is that, you know, when you kill um, somebody like Daria Dugina is... Well, <laughs> How how do you how are you going to justify that? You know you just can't. You know I mean they tried. You know the media did try. Oh well, she's a war propagandist. Oh, she really supports uh, what Russia is doing. That still doesn't make her in any way a legitimate target. Um, so that's why then they start putting out these stories, which they did immediately after the Dugina assassination. Well, we had nothing to do with it. It's entirely them. It was it was all um, <laughs> the Ukrainians. Even those who see such lethal missions as defensible in uh, <clears throat> in wartime question the utility of certain strikes and decisions that led to the targeting of civilians, including Dugina or her father, Alexander Dugin, who officials acknowledge was the intended mark rather than Russians more directly linked to the war. Um, others cited broader concerns about Ukraine's cutthroat tactics that may seem justified now, uh, especially against a country accused of widespread war atrocities, but uh, could later prove difficult to rein in. Well, not really. I mean, you can't just simply say, well, you know, they commit war crimes, so we're going to commit war crimes. I mean, that's that's never any kind of a justification. I mean, you know, even assuming that all this is uh, true, you still can't justify your crime by by citing somebody else's uh, crime. Um, and then it says, SBU and GUR officials describe their expanding operational roles um, as the result of extraordinary circumstances. All targets hit by SBU are completely legal, the agency's director said in the statement to the Post. 
The statement did not specifically address targeted killings, but this Vasil Maliuk uh, said, said Ukraine does everything to ensure that fair punishment will catch up with all traitors, war criminals, and collaborators. That's that's a pretty broad category of targets: traitors, war criminals, and collaborators. Could be anybody. Well, it seems pretty arbitrary, and based right. on what kind of rules of engagement, international law, the uh, um, um, the what the way one conducts um, uh, war, it's all beyond that. It's all arbitrary. Right. Right. Um, and, and, and there's no due process. I mean, it's not no. like. No. You know, you, you have, you know, evidence and, you know, and, and making some kind of public uh, protestations. But this is, uh, we like killing people we don't like. That's right. That's exactly. That's that. ex exactly right. Um, and then so we never involved our international partners in covert operations, especially behind the front line. Then what's the point of the article? The, of right. course they do. Of course they do. Um, uh, SBU and GUR operatives were not accompanied by CIA counterparts. Yeah, it's known as plausible deniability. I mean, how many times are you going to say, yeah, it's plausible deniability? The CIA said, don't involve us. We know what you're doing, but you know, don't put us in a position where we actually know ahead of time what you're going to do. And then, right. and then there'll be pressure on us as well. Why did you try to stop this? Because and so on. So they say, okay, just, just, you know, keep, keep, keep whatever you're doing to yourself. Um, Ukraine avoided using weapons or equipment that could be traced to U.S. sources. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and even covert funding streams were segregated. Again, um, uh, we just uh, want to keep our hands clean. That's right, exactly. Um, <laughs> but it's it's transparent. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, so we had a lot of restrictions about working with the Ukrainians operationally said a former U.S. intelligence official. Well, we're not a party to the conflict. You know, you know we're, we're not party to this. Um, yeah, but it's interesting. The, thing that, the, the one problem with print, with this sentence, is that it, for the former U.S. intelligence, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, you, you, you know what I mean? You, you, could, right. you could look at it both ways. Well, that's right. But imagine, let's say we were reading an article about um, Iran and Hamas. And so Hamas is Ukraine, and then Iran is the United States. And imagine if an Iranian official was making this, like, oh, we don't get involved in the, the details of these uh, assassinations. Uh, you know, we, we make sure that we're out of the loop, like we, you know, about, you know, when they, when they start attacking um, uh, targets inside Israel, we just, um, you know, we just provide the training, the money and everything. But you know the details of this uh, targeting, particularly when they're embarrassing targeting, like you know, killing a, a young woman who hadn't done anything. Uh, we, you know, we, we, you know, we, we're out of it. Would anyone accept that and say, "Oh, well, well, that's fair enough." You know, you, you know, Ukraine's not a Iran's not a party to the conflict. You know, they, you know, they're, they're just making sure that their hands are clean. I mean, no one would accept yeah, anything yeah. like it, that. You know, it was Iran that was behind the Hamas attack in in, uh, in Israel, uh, that, according to um, uh, um, Lindsey Graham. Okay, right. but the United States has nothing to do with what's going. No, on. That's right, exactly. The, the, this is not the, the, intel, right. the intelligence you know, community in Ukraine. Of course not. Of course not. That's right. no, they they decide everything for themselves. The emphasis was more on secure com communications and tradecraft and pursuing new streams of intelligence inside Russia rather than here's how you blow up a mayor. <laughs> I never got the sense that we were that involved in designing their ops. Oh, you never got that sense. Never. Okay, I guess you were out of the loop. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. It was just about uh, secure communications and tradecraft. You know, that's stuff you can look up on the internet. No, this is just supper club stuff, okay? We just talk okay? <laughs> that's right. over drinks, okay? Um, even so, officials acknowledge that boundaries were occasionally blurred. Oh, they were blurred. CIA officers in Kiev were made aware of some of Ukraine's more ambitious plans for strikes. In some cases, including the bombing of the Kerch Bridge, U.S. officials registered concerns. I have concerns. Oh, okay, good. Okay, well, but, but I don't think British intelligence had concerns. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> and again, when you have British intelligence, American intelligence, I mean, these are all kind of interchangeable uh, groups of people. Um, Ukraine spies develop their own lines about which operations to discuss and which to keep under wraps. 
again, you know, which to discuss, and then we should keep on the right of what the Americans said, well, don't say anything to us that you know, will, could embarrass us down the line. There were some things that maybe we wouldn't talk about with CIA counterparts, so the second Ukrainian security official involved in such missions. He said, I thought I thought it was just that we're talking about tradecraft. I thought that we, you know, like, like you said, you know, just well, tradecraft. Well, you know, I think we should try, you know, the, the, this is the, these are the, the, this craft of spying, which is really very interesting. I thought that's what they just were discussing. Um, he said, crossing those boundaries would lead to a terse reply from Americans. We don't want any part of that. Not, don't do it. Don't. We don't want any part of it. <laughs> like you know, thought, you know, like we're going to rob a bank. Not, don't do it. It's it's not a good idea no, no, to it, rob a bank. Just make sure you rub off our fingerprints. Off, exactly. Off we we don't want to. Yeah, we don't we don't want to take part in this. Um, um, anyway, the C CIA Ukraine collaboration took root in the aftermath of the 2014 protests. Protests. Uh, protests. Protests <laughs> okay. that prompted. Ukraine's pro-Russian uh, President Viktor Yanukovych to flee the country. The initial phases were tentative, of cooperation were tentative. To manage their security risk, the CIA worked with the SBU to create an entirely new directorate. New, new one. Entirely yeah. new. Entirely. Uh, the new unit was prosaically dubbed the fifth directorate, and then the sixth directorate has since been added, officials said, to work with Britain's MI6 spy agency. Anyway, I mean, it's a very long article and people can uh, read it for themselves. A lot of, there's a lot of interesting detail, but you notice how utterly sort of dishonest this whole exercise is. Because well, it was an attempt at transparency, right. George. But right. no, they reveal their dishonesty, right. every sentence of that article. Exactly. And that's the thing, because on the one hand, they, they, they suggest, well, you know, this is just, you know, trade, trade spying, you know, this is how you, this is how you do spying, gathering intelligence, you know, so, you know, as a, but, they, but there are all these operations. Yeah, but um, they, they, we, we, we kind of told them that, you know, we, we want to stay out of some operations, you know, what, what, which operations? Um, I mean, it's a little embarrassing when they, they, they assassinate. No, but see the Ukrainians will re retort in, in, the, in a perverse logical way is that, hey, we, you've given us the tools and the technology. This is what exactly what we want to do. That's right. exactly what we want. To of do. course, of course, of course. Um, and, and the whole idea when you're doing things like carrying out assassinations, which, are, you know, they, they, that requires a lot of planning. Um, of course, the CIA was, was in on it. Of course, they knew all about it. And were you know, and they've had a lot of experience in, in this kind of work. Of course, they were involved in the planning. Um, you know, I mean, it, it. And even the reporter of the Washington Post kind of acknowledges this. I mean, it's like you know, I mean, they're obviously that they're, they're trying to have it every which way. You know, well, it was all you know, you know, this was done by them. But then they have to admit, yeah, but the whole place is run by the CIA. I mean, they they ran it. They created this agency. So the idea that they weren't involved in this. I mean, you know, when Dugana was killed, and, you know, I guess everybody admits now it was the father that was the mark. I mean, even if you're in Ukraine and they you mention, you know, Alexander Dugan, they'll say, yeah, he's kind of this kind of, you know, loony kind of guy. Um, uh, he's got kind of a cult following, but he's not really anybody important but somebody in the in, in the american intelligence community oh this is putin's brain okay yeah i'm not convinced that the ukrainians were were they thought oh this is the game changer well, you know something will change you know putin's power will code but somebody in america thinks that okay I, i've I, always wondered why they targeted him because that is a an american fixation i i, I absolutely western agree. media but i, I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody. No, I, 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 I he's agree. He's kind with you. of a, you know, he's that's kind of like a loony blogger. That's it. That's 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 exactly right. I mean, that's that's the thing about Dugan is that um, you know he's a you know, he's a yeah, blogger, a philosopher. You know, he writes about Heidegger and and uh, and so on. Um, it's only the Americans who are con uh, uh, obsessed with the idea that he's Putin's brain and that he's he's somehow his ideas are really animating. Uh, Putin and the whole operation in Ukraine. I don't think Ukrainians would have come to that. And I just think that, that that's just, it's not something that um, uh, would have occurred to them. Same with this blogger. I mean, it's like, again, the Americans would be, you know, be preoccupied. Ah, this blogger, you know, he's he's obviously uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the minds behind this uh, operation. So 
you know, I, I, I think that that's, that's not a kind of target that Ukrainians themselves would have come up with. Um, again, we don't know. Um, but but that's it. Just it just seemed very unlikely because you know every, everyone knows that you know you know Dugin is a sort of marginal figure and has been has been for decades a marginal figure. Well, but the 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 only sentence in that article that we examined is that um, in 2015, shortly after 2014, that that's to tell everyone. The coup was committed, and then the CIA got digs in in Ukraine, and they've been then then been borrowing the way they're, they're themselves in. That is the tell here. Okay, so when did the conflict start in Ukraine? It started when the, it was the illegal overthrow of a democratically elected government in Ukraine. That's the origins. That is the the predicate for what we have right now. And the CIA has been in full steam ahead on on top of this agenda since that time. So that's the only thing that you really, the only takeaway, the fact that the that the CIA is running operations through Ukrainian intelligence, well, you didn't have to write an article about it to tell me. <laughs> no, I agree, I agree. 2014 was the key, as uh, Jens Stoltenberg has repeated a number of times, we have been there since 2014, you know, and, and he goes through the list of all the things that you've been there. I mean, you know, in, in a major way that you were there. And then since 2014, you've had all the fat cats, Democratic Party fat cats, such as the Biden family and the John Kerry family and everyone making money in Ukraine. So, so it all goes back to 2014. You've got the, the Dem Democratic Party getting their dibs into Ukraine. You have the CIA getting to run their intelligence and you have NATO building up. You kind of see, you know, from, from the Russian perspective, this is not a good situation. Kind of a pattern, <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a good situation it, for us in it, the long term. It's kind of a pattern, wouldn't you say? Or am I yes. reaching? <laughs> it's a, these articles I always find very, very bizarre because they're they're trying to, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of, you know, cleansing their souls or something. I, I don't know. But, you know. Um, it's all for the good, though. It, it's right. all for the good. It, it's always that way, isn't right, it? Right. That, that's right. It's 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 done in a kind of almost like a jovial way. Well, you know, um, you know, it, it probably is true that uh, the CIA has been running the Ukrainian intelligence uh, services. It's probably it's probably good, good idea. You know, it's per perfectly reasonable. I mean, you know, they, they're you know, our they, allies. George. Yeah, they're, they're our allies. ally. You know, so nothing wrong with that. But they felt they do feel that they have to put this out there. You know, so you can't just essentially keep up this lie that somehow it's all Ukraine and you know no 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 one's in it. So yeah, you know, but there there's a small group of us that will say, well, I think we may not have the empirical evidence in front of us to support our argument, but logic would dictate that once the coup was committed, that the Western intelligence communities, the British and the Americans, got them dug themselves in now you and i have carried that as a theory because it makes sense so the new york times or washington post just confirms it okay right. fine right. I, am i in do i feel good oh i was right <laughs> no i i, I don't right. feel good right. about these things right but again it's very interesting yeah they they confirm it but confirm what exactly they yeah. confirm hey well you know we're, we're on the side of good you know we're on a, i mean why does stoltenberg who comes along? Why? Why does he say we've been there since 2014? Because when you say that, you're pretty much, you know, your whole shtick about this is an unprovoked attack goes out of the window. I mean, if you were there, you know, since and the Russians are saying, "Hey, this is a hostile military alliance. We don't like it on our borders," and then you admit, "Yeah, we've been there since 2014." You know, you're undermining your case. I mean, I guess I think that somehow, well, you know, we 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 want to show. That we're the good guys, and and uh, and and you're kind of he hedging your bets, you know. So you say, well, yeah, but not sure, but we did we did some good work here. The, you, I think this is key, and it's it just something that kind of gnaws away at me. The, these articles, it is like a hedge. It's kind of like a hedge, and it's yeah. it, they kind of push it, and then they kind of stand back, and they kind of push it, and you know, and, and you have to understand. These people are weaving these narratives, and they try to put the, they put try to put the pieces together. They think that you'll fall for, okay? Right. 
Right. And so this is kind of a piece that they've kind of shown everyone. Right. And, but the, the puzzles they make are not, there's not one single puzzle. There's a lot of different ones. Right, right. I think, it, I think they just kind of keep it, you know, kind of um, drifting in air when they can grab it and, and uh, put, put it into their um, 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 prefabricated picture for all of us. Because we see this on a lot of different things, okay? And and it, it just, it's a, it's kind of like a, backhanded admission for something that may have a different meaning as we go along. Right, that's right. And I think that's why it's hedging your bets is that, is that it all depends on what the final outcome is. So if, yeah. if if the final outcome is, hey, Ukraine wins, yeah, we were there from the beginning. Yeah, the, the, the winner, the champions, you know, you know, they, they take a victory lap, Jens. Uh, and if you victory. lose... We kept them at arm's length the whole. We, exactly, exactly, and and there were these really bad guys who were, you know, doing things that they should have been doing. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, exactly. You know, they no one was overseeing them. They were out of control and so on. So it's like you know, you just keep 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 the two stories going, depending on the outcome, and decide which, which one you're going to go with. Exactly, exactly, and it's the, we have. A multiple multi-layered narratives in play right now okay and i think that's what this was in, that was the intention of doing it i don't think you know when one of those sentences it was like like somebody had pangs of conscience like, i'm sorry <laughs> it didn't come with the job okay? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you're worried about your conscience you're in the wrong line of business right. okay? yeah. no they these are you know then the, these, these people do not have any pangs of conscience so uh, <laughs> anyway, it was an interesting article, an interesting kind of quasi backhanded admission for purposes that I think remain to be seen. Okay, right. but you know, it, it it it's an oddity. But then this is what we're. It's all about controlling the narrative, and right. they seem to think this is important to make reveal this now uh, as part of whatever narrative they're going to push. Ultimately, no, I, th I think that's right. I think that's why you know you you know you put out different stories. And then see which see which one you want to go with, um, depending on the circumstances. So I mean, that, I mean, that of, of, often does. I mean, I remember, you know, go, going back to the uh, the NATO's bombing of Yugoslavia. Remember when they bombed the Chinese embassy? So the U.S. media come, oh, this was an absolute mistake. Oh, we, you know, we're really, really very sorry. You know, we apologize profusely to the Chinese. You know, we had the we had the wrong map. You know, we, somebody gave us the wrong map. And then they kind of put you know put out a story to the the British media. Actually, we did target the uh, the Chinese because we were the Chinese were in, you know involved in clandestine intelligence communications with the Yugoslav government. Oh, I, 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 well, well, no, nothing to do with it. See, you know, perfect example. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. Example. You know, we just keep keep the two stories going. Well, it was a terrible accident. Yeah, but hey, it was actually we knew what we were doing when we hit the Chinese embassy. So that's it. That's that's what you know. You you make sure that there's. You know, you can keep keep both things. You know, depends on the the circumstances. Yeah, and you know, there's a, also a third element to that bombing of the Chinese embassy is that it was just fun, okay? Because we could do it. That's right. That's it's because we could do it, okay? That's true. Yeah, that's that, that, that's sometimes part of the logic, okay? Oh. Yeah, we can get away with it, but what are you going to do about it? Well, that's right. I mean, it was '99. Chinese were much weaker than uh, than they are now, and so yeah, yeah they right, so, you know, yeah exactly. Yeah. What yeah. are you going to do about it? Exactly. Okay. I think that was, yeah, they, they fumed, you know, there were these mass protests uh, at uh, outside U.S. Embassy in uh, Beijing. But again, all right, sorry, accidents happen. You know, I dropped uh, my plate the other day and I was when I was washing up, I broke my plate. You know, you know what can I do? Um, you know, well, the, the, what's really interesting is that to finish off here, is that it's it's really interesting of how much they have much more effort they have to uh, uh, employ for message control because when the when the Chinese embassy was bombed there was no real meaningful internet the way we know it today and now there's so many other people that be able to de yep. de uh, decipher and forensically uh, examine their statements and they, they have to get better because yeah. they they really drop the ball they really screw themselves a lot okay i mean yeah. uh, radek sikorsky the the um, uh, um nord stream pipeline board like, thank you america on twitter okay see <laughs> thank you man well, I, you know i didn't mean it I, it was just i was just in high high spirits you know i i drunk a little too much over lunch uh you know that yeah that, that, that's right you got to you got to you got to stay on message um 
and uh, even though they, you know, you have Victoria Newland and says, "Aren't you happy, Senator, to see? I uh, think the Nord Stream gas pipeline is just a rusting metal at the bottom of the sea." I mean, you know, that's, that's as much an admission as uh, as Sikorsky's. Yep. You're not we're not dealing with the smartest people, but they are right. devious, okay? Right. And you know, and you have to give them credit for their effort because they're unrelenting, unrelenting, unrelenting. All right, everybody. Um, uh, closing out the week here. All right. Um, uh, this is Peter and George. Uh, we're the gaggle. We're on local, so please go to the gaggle.locals.com. Yes, boys, I'm almost done. Uh, after two hours and 20 minutes. Um, it is Friday. That means George's live stream is way, way out. Exactly. Well, yeah. You have to somehow survive. I don't know how, you know, if, uh, you're going to survive because you don't have, you know, these delightful dogs to keep you company. So you have to somehow survive till Tuesday. If you can survive, then 3 p.m. Eastern time, please join me. Come with comments, criticisms, and suggestions. And on the way out the door, think about a little buddy because buddy said, I, I've got a few narratives going. I mean, you know, what I mean, you know, I got a narrative about the, the tip jar. And then there's a lot of very suspicious uh, going on, and um, we need a, a, a full public inquiry into the state of the tip jar. So um, think about, you know, little buddy, if you've got a few bob in your pocket, whip them out, dunk them in, in his tip jar. Um, that'll at least calm him down about these full in international inquiries. Um, we're very grateful for all of your help, friendship, and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make the more we can work on the technology. And above all, we can just uh, calm Buddy down until next Tuesday. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.